Hey guys, so today I am going to talk a little bit about the new set. I am surprised to see that we have flip cards again, although I really shouldn't be because we had the flip dual lands. Now we have cards that are equipments that flip into planeswalkers and I assume creatures and other things of that nature. Uh, they're running out of creative ideas. So when I look at these cards, these seem to be poorly designed. Um, and I think we're going to have some problems in the future. And I think these cards will eventually be banned. Some of them. Because whenever you deal with flip cards, you kind of are running out of... I mean, essentially, you're basically making two cards for one and using the back of the card as additional real estate, if you will. Which was fine during Innistrad because that was innovative, if you will. Uh, but now it just seems like they ran out of ideas that this uh, legendary equipment artifact and that the fact that it returns the gods, which we've seen before, but these gods are actually destroyable, which is interesting. And even the planeswalkers, they seem very repetitive. And now again, when your card game has, what, 30,000, 20,000 cards... Yes, you will see a lot of repetitive mechanics. And you won't see that many great ideas. And I think that's where we are now. So Changeling is another idea. Now we have Dwarf Lords. We have Berserkers as a theme. We had... Uh, I, I'm not seeing any creative endeavors, right? And given what happened to Ikoria, given what happened with the the... Companions and Oko and Euro and basically like Anaf, right? And we just came from Zendikar, which then we came from Ravnica, and it just doesn't seem like this game has the creativeness. And I think when you hire people based on not their quality of production, instead of hiring the most qualified applicant, you hire an applicant that is maybe less qualified, but has other attributes that you desire, uh, fill in the blank here, then this is what you get. I mean, you get a total lack of creativity, a total lack of play design. You know, Mero was talking about uh, how you become a designer and you do a competition, you do all these things, and it seemed like a really difficult process but you know who's a designer now? The uh, Magic Pro of one of the lowest ELOs I've ever seen has been recently hired as a designer. Now, I don't criticize him, they, he, they, she, it, whatever the pronoun. Um, it, any individual hired at Research and Development associates Blue Martian, Pink Elephant. But at the same time, is that individual the most qualified? And I would say no. And that is a very... So if you read in between the lines, that's what's happening right now is you're, they're hiring individuals who are grossly underqualified, who McDonald's wouldn't even hire. Uh, honestly, they couldn't even get a job at McDonald's. Some of these resources, like if you, if you put Meryl on the street, who would hire him? I would not. I mean... He's terrible at playing design, research, and development. Lee Sharp, you put him on the street. Who would hire him, like, with his purple hair or whatever? No offense to people with purple hair, but when you're an executive and you work for a multi-billion dollar company, I don't see too many CEOs for purple hair. I mean, maybe uh, Chris Cox is one, but who knows. So anyway, there is a total lack of professionalism there is a total lack of talent, and I think uh, people are right. You know, people have telling me of the, this game. I've, I don't own any cards. I've never played it, and I'm not going to play Flesh and Blood. And um, but I can tell you what I'm not playing. I'm not playing Magic right now. I'm not collecting Magic anymore because it's not fun. When I look at these cards, they just lack creativity. They're so uncreative, uninspired, and we just go to same blanking planes all all the time. And the artwork is kind of bad. I don't really like the artwork. And the artwork does have, you know, we went from 
Rebecca Gray to Teresa Nielsen. We had some of the best, greatest artists making our artwork. And yeah, our artwork was attractive. Like, look at Fate Grand Order. Look at uh, Genshin Impact. I mean, these are very attractive artwork pieces, right? That they have, and they know that the younger base, if you have ever played, you know, Call of Duty or uh, Fortnite or something, that's what they want. They want something creative, something new. And all we get is the same same old for the last, you know, that 80-year-old grandmother pirate. And I just keep remembering, and it's like, my God, it's like, how, how, you know, how? So, anyway, I think the direction of Magic the Gathering, and I think the direction of this set is very bad. I think the people who made this set are very, or don't have very much talent. And I played Magic long enough to know that they're out of ideas. They are out of ideas. This essentially is Ice Age 2.0. Ice Age 1.0, I don't think anyone actually wanted to return to it. So I'm not at all surprised that when you see the same flip cards, you see, I mean, technically they do something a little different now. But man, I mean, I don't, I've never liked the flip cards. And I've always felt that they're very difficult to play with and keep your cards in good shape in Paper Magic. It's fine for MTG Arena. MTG Arena, it doesn't matter. But for Paper Magic, yeah, when you have your $40 collectible flip card, you're not going to want to play it, which defeats the whole purpose of uh, playing Magic, right? Is when you have cards that are so expensive and then you have to actually damage to use... You probably don't want... I mean, they're probably come in damaged, but who knows. Bye, guys.